And we're ready to start our next game. No breaks and a really nice matchup here between uh, Jason Keller and Jeremy <laughs> and two more stalwart. You Jason see the fist Keller. bump to start the game. Jason going first, Jeremy about to follow. And you can see both of these racks, not great, but Nitz, I would probably prefer Jason's to Jeremy's here if I had to choose. Oh my gosh, yes, very much so. Oof. I mean, we all agree that the Y is basically its own battle at this point, right? For sure. Um, and, uh, you know, the Y can often be that saving grace with all of your other high point consonants to really unlock that scoring potential. Um, and a nice spot by Jason. He might be about to play dually. Um, putting that Y on a double letter score. That looks pretty strong to me. Um, I was just thinking about something like Yald here, but he, yeah, or maybe Al Kid. Wow. He's he's generated a lot of good choices oh, that are hurt. He's yeah, Keller, uh yeah, he's 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 a giant in his own right. I mean it's uh I've played him in the past and it's every time it's just it's pretty rapid fire, just you know, hits of very, very good, yeah. strong plays. No question. He is a very fast player. He plays with good pace, is able to find his words quickly. He plays Al Kid um, in uh, the 30 point spot. Looks like uh, a pretty good option to me for sure here. Um, leaving LU, not the strongest combination, but let's see what he's able to draw with it. Um, it is, oh, we definitely want to note that Jason was last year's Canadian Scrabble Classic winner, and how he got that designation was by absolutely destroying none other than myself in the finals by <laughs> a score of four games to one. I absolutely got destroyed by Jason. Wow. Um, well earned. He really just, uh, <laughs> and there you see, uh, <laughs> A cartoonized version of me. If I'm Dr. Scrabble, then that makes uh, Jason some kind of whatever. I don't know. What's a level up from doctor? I don't know. Um, uh, PhD. Doctor. Well, doctor is PhD. <laughs> there you two go. Multiple, yeah. doctorate, multiple doctorate. He's got two doctorates. Um, you could be Scrabble. like Bruce Banner. You know, you could have uh, seven. Wow. Wait, Bruce Banner has seven doctorates? I'm pretty sure. How many I've of those did he marble. How many of those <laughs> did he earn while at like Hulked? I'm curious. Oh. Is it all Well, is he it was all Professor Hulk for a bit. Yeah. Um I remember yeah. at least one of those movies he was uh he was like a, a wise Hulk or like a chill Hulk. Um I'll admittedly Before we I get too I, far into that. I am not the most, uh, you know, wise uh, wise up on the Marvel movies, so I, I do apologize. Though um, I've watched a few, but uh, my okay. favorite superheroes, my favorite superheroes are Adam Logan, Josh Castellano, Josh Sokol. These <laughs> are my these are my heroes. Um, as see, we Josh see, Josh Castellano would say that about you. He would look at you and just say, "Yeah, that that man's a Chad. He's a giga Chad." I, I, I honestly don't know what Those I. Those are the words <laughs> we use for you. There you see, Literally Professor Hulk. Uh, Professor Hulk on your screen. There, that is that's a just a handsome Hulk. Uh, Mark Ruffalo look making it work there. Um, all right, so Jason about to okay. play Flux. Uh, seems this seems good. pretty good. He keeps the C H T combination together. If he gets a couple vowels, he might be really really happy to score a ton of points to that triple off of the F of flux. Um, of course, that's a, it's quite dangerous. You could easily imagine Jeremy having a play there, but of course you, we can see Jeremy's letters yeah. are quite terrible. Um, yeah. He looks like he's getting ready to play Vogue on top of bib, which that looks like it's going to score pretty well, but it's kind of yeah. scary to create that big S hook. Maybe it's not so Maybe bad. I mean, there's, there's already some hooks. That, you know, or you know bib, bibs. Bibs is already on the board. Um, and also, bibe is a word. So it's sometimes by playing Vogue, you might actually block certain bingos that require an e hook to bib. Um, True. So, Fantastic point. Yeah, it's uh, not a good situation for Jeremy, really, but uh, so he'll. He's got to put something um, on the board here. 
Yeah. Phil Robert Shaw in comments says, Jeremy probably needed to be exchanging his first move. And I agree with that. I mean, if I had that rack, uh, I would be calculating how many points am I getting on the board? And, you know, like what is the valuation of the junk that I'm keeping? And then is it just better to exchange there? And perhaps I think I would have exchanged. Yeah. Um, the leave on bib was certainly rough. Um, with D G M V that's really a rough four tile combination. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's tough to say no to a solid number of points and we are going to see vom hit the board here. I think this is a word meaning to vomit, uh, in the Collins lexicon. Oh. So 25 points here, of course, setting up that S hook, which he does not have and leaving four consonants. That's tough, tough pill to swallow, but I think it's probably worth playing something there, just kind of uh, gritting your teeth and putting something in that spot for a decent score. I think so, I too. Know. I would have liked to see Gov, just because I don't want that G on my rack. Um, but, oh, you know, Vom is nice. I have to say, this is crazy, though, because that M in that spot, allows Jason to play homeotic and buy. Oh my God. So that's insane. I cannot imagine. Oh, I could miss this easily. If Jason oh finds gosh. this, if Jason finds this, I'll be very impressed because that M looks so obstructed in that spot to think of finding homeotic here you kind of need to already be thinking about it, right? Like in this situation, if you're Jason, if you're going to find that play that's really obstructed in that spot, making vibe another strange hook, if you're looking at your rack of C-E-H-I-O-O-T and you already have thought of homeotic, maybe you will see it when that M hits the board there. Other than that, it's going to be really tough. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, he did have C-H-O-O -O on his rack just to move to the side. Maybe he was thinking of Choom, perhaps? I don't know. I mean, Possibly. homeotic, that would be, wow, that would be, it'd be, a, it'd be the new zygosity. <laughs> That's true. And that was an amazing situation at the Crescent City Cup, of course, where Jason had a potential gigantic play of Zygosity, probably the biggest play I would ever have seen be played um, in, an, in a live stream game. And it looked like he had it lined up on his rack. And indeed, he plays Cootie. Uh, under okay. normal circumstances, this would be a perfectly solid play. Of course, though, as we know, a very tricky bingo of homeotic goes uh, unfound here. So tough one, really tough one, to be honest. Really tough one, I can't, yeah. I can't get on him too hard for that. Um, so I, yeah, I wouldn't be looking for a bingo through that M. Yeah, for sure. I, I think very few of us would be. Um, so slight missed opportunity. Um, Definitely, uh, yeah, Zygosity remains in a league of its own. Yeah, that was pretty insane. Um, Got to call out a nice comment from Chess Bunzo, who says, Will is the Hulk of Scrabble. I mean, damn. <laughs> he really is. Um, I mean, I don't know if we can get some quick Photoshop done on that, but uh, <laughs> I think that's, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm a pretty wiry guy. The Hulk has got a little more beef Bro, to him. Bro, have I've you done. met Will Anderson? He is a giga chat, okay? Like, he is swole, okay? Like, he's got it going on. Well, I appreciate that. But again, I don't I don't think I rise to, to the level of Hulk status. But I do appreciate it as we see gut goes down here, 19 points. Man, it feels like every turn, and maybe it's literally the case at every turn for Jeremy here, he's kept four consonants on all Oof. of these plays. Um, that that's is just fun. Tough. You know, this is kind of a textbook example of why those four consonant leaves are so challenging to deal with and why sometimes exchanging tiles is such a good, is such a good option just because you can break this cycle of 20-point plays 
so mm. early. You just exchange at that first moment when you're thinking of getting into a situation like this. Um, you can get back to scoring your average number of points per turn. And for a player like Jeremy, a seasoned expert player, he's rated in the 1850 range, 1900 for most of his career, a really, really strong player. His average points per turn is probably 33, 34, 35, mm -hmm. something very high, high enough that if he would just have exchanged on that first turn and gotten back to scoring his average number of points, he would be way ahead of where he is now. Definitely, definitely. Um, so I wonder yeah. if, yeah, I wonder if now with the S, Jason would be look, trying to find something with Voms, but if he can't, True. well, then that S is, you know, great for next turn. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the best thing I see is just Shent. Um, and Voms, which is a reasonable choice. Alternatively, um, that scores pretty well, but if he just wants to try, oh, is he, he's got F H N, but he also has the E. I thought he was about yeah. to play phone with an E uh -huh. in it somewhere. I definitely would love to see him try to keep this E if he can. Um, where is he? He's getting yeah. ready to play F heft under flux maybe that score is okay but nns is not what i want to keep here either um tricky i i would yeah maybe just maybe just f o h n through the o and cootie one of the o's and cootie perhaps i i Ooh, like that. Is such a nice leave i that's exactly why i like it so much and actually f o h n it gets the f and the h Oh, what an oh. odd choice that is. Well, I guess it's not that odd. It, You know, it is odd yep. because it only scores one more point than F-O-H-N through the second O of Cootie, and you really hurt mm -hmm. your leave by using up that vowel. Yeah. And you also open a triple word score that you don't have to open. So this is... A strange choice, definitely. Um, I would like to have just seen FOHN, like you said there, Nitz. And you can see now by, oh, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, uh, you know, I was like, oh, you know, he's got my name on the rack. No, no, he's, he's got more than got, that. Yeah, he's got Nitz, Nitzwit, which is something that you have <laughs> in spades. Um, but uh, yeah. says nit nit Nitwits. <laughs> So, so Nitwits plays underneath Flux making Taxi, but also I got to wow. call out, I wonder if he's going to see the anagram of this, of In Twist and Voms is going to score a ton of points if he's able to see that one too. So nice. um, there's a couple options for him here. In Twist on the triple with Voms is going to score even better than nitwits and taxi. So hopefully he's able to come up with that here, but we shall see. We shall see. Um, but what is Jeremy going to do? I mean, I, three Ds. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I wouldn't mind just exchanging the three Ds on the G. You know, just keep N-E-T. Just, I don't know. It's it's just brutal. This game has been really brutal uh, for him. I feel like he has just not had a good rack at any point. It's difficult to really, you know, get on him too much. I mean, his worst play, quote unquote, was Bib. And even then, that was kind of a borderline one. It's not his fault that he just cannot seem to draw any vowels <laughs> seemingly ever. Um, oh, but, God, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. May just maybe. Just for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, Phil Roberts uh, in the chat. Hello, Phil, by the way. I think uh, we've said hi to Phil before. Suggests maybe Bided from BY. Uh, with Bib and Al Kid, that would get rid of two of your three Ds and score decently well. Um, and it looks like instead he's played just dead on top of Vom there. Um, okay. Again, the, the four consonants. And uh, that did block in twist, of course. Uh, so that had a, a hidden benefit uh, to Jeremy there. But Jason plays Nitwits very quickly. Nits, I'm very okay. excited. We've seen a Nit bingo be played in, <laughs> in our picture. Nice. 
Well, maybe a will bingo is not too far off, you know? <laughs> it's it's possible. Typically, you know, the double L's and the I and the W is not a great set of tiles for you to to have. But if you're able to get a will bingo out of it, that's pretty good. So uh, maybe we'll see that. But doesn't seem like Jeremy is close to that anytime soon. Um, so let's see. Maybe. Hmm. What he what is he? Yeah, supposed if he were to do, to do something like mend down phone, maybe making H M N E D T Z is not terrible to keep. I mean, we we talked about this previously that in Collins Z is pretty O P. You know, it's not the worst tile to have on your rack. It's it would be an improvement. <laughs> Jeremy, because it would be a three consonant leave as opposed to a four consonant four leave. Consonant leave. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's just struggling. This is one of these games that, uh, you know, we can go back and forth on whether an exchange would have been called for early, but it doesn't change the fact that under any circumstances, drawing this many consonant heavy racks is uh, pretty bad luck. So I yeah. agree. It looks like Mend Jeremy is going to stick to his guns, and I think this is a pretty reasonable play here. Um, Mend makes sense to me, as you suggested, Nitz. So he's going to hope for some vowels. Will he get some? Um, he's really earned the right to get three vowels here, I would say. <laughs> Definitely. He's paid, he's paid his dues already. Come on. Let's see him get it. <laughs> Please, somebody help him out. Let's see what he draws. Holding that bag aloft. An S, we like that. An S, we don't like that oh. as much. And there's two <laughs> more vowels. All right, pretty good. We there can, we go. We can work with that. We can work with this. Um, S's are but, better uh, than more G's. For sure. So uh, <laughs> in any case, better draw for Jeremy. He's on the path to scoring a bunch of points over a few turns in a row. But Jason is probably about to play Hod to this D. And it seemed like he might have been doubting for a second. And down it goes. So 39 points for this play. He's going to be nice. up by over 100 going into his next turn. So um, Ooh. Make that's Making an a uncomfortable lot. spot for just Zah, though. So, I mean, there's, there's always benefits. True. That to... is true. Za parallel. Point. Yep, absolutely. Za parallel to Hod is going to be a nice score. And he's got those two S's in reserve. So if he can just manage to draw bingo, um, he is not too far away from being competitive again in this game. Um, Jason has pretty good Definitely. tiles, though. There we go. There's the Z play. Step one. Step two is to draw an E or a blank for Jerry. <laughs> And he'd achieve that Ooh. goal. We'll find out. <laughs> With a two tile play, we'll find out. Yeah. Um, so back to Jason, and he is very likely to, he just played Hod to that upper right triple, and he's very likely, and it, he's already set it up on his rack to play something now to that lower left triple and just cover him up um, bit by bit. And, uh, Looks like Jeremy has a seven-letter bingo of rudists on his rack. I don't think that's going to fit anywhere that I see, though. The board is kind of rapidly closing off here, too. So That's okay, because um, Best just pointed out distrust in the chat. And Jeremy sees it. Very nice to the T of Cootie. Good find, Best, Fantastic. and good job to everybody that's uh, you know spotted that. That's going to be huge. I don't think there's any scenario where that gets blocked and Jeremy needs that badly. And he also needs one or both of those two blanks that are still lurking. Very possible here. If Jason plays in that lower left corner and does not draw a blank and Jeremy bingos and does, we could see a big shift a momentum shift um, in this game. So definitely wonder because distress is, it's going to create all these nice little floaters where, you know, sure. just nice and happy to play through. It's a really, it's a quarter of the board that we haven't had available yet. And it will be with distrust coming down. Yeah. Um, 
A play that I'm seeing that I'd wonder if it's actually a good play for Jason here would just be something like you could play some stuff in that vid and ged area of the board. Like imagine yeah. if you play gauged there, making ah. avid, you would set up your P for pavid really heavily. Oh and gosh. similarly, similarly, if you just play pavid now, you set up your G for gauged too. So just, just a thought. Um, I think opening is probably fine here. Uh, just throwing that out there, some cool options. Well, I have no why problem would you with ever. Opening. Why would you ever question why we think of you as the Hulk when you just suggest plays like that? You'd be like, oh yeah, let's play Geese. Not a big deal at all. It's such a pavid. Bruh, that is why we're the Hulk. Thank you very much, Nitz. I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's, I feel like uh, a lot of my ideas that I would I would consider myself to be a Hulk for end up being a big mistake. Uh, and there there I am again, producer Josh, not letting me get <laughs> this cartoonized version of myself. Um, but uh, distrust is uh, the theme of this conversation. I need <gasps> not to distrust myself, but there it is. Wow, that's the first blank. blank. Wow first blank finds its way onto Jeremy's rack. Is this the beginning of a big momentum shift in this game? That is really what we needed. That's it's been all Jason here to start the game. Amazingly, Jeremy finds himself down by 40 points only in this mid game. It feels like Jason's just been using up triples bingoing uh whereas J Jeremy hasn't gotten one down, but it's actually still pretty close. And Jason's not going to have anything super heavy hitting here, I don't believe, unless I'm missing something. Um, so we'll see. But it's almost a certainty that Jeremy's going to bingo next turn somewhere. The only question is where. If uh, the D and the triple isn't taken, he's got multiple there. He's got, yeah. Oh, so, and it gets taken up. Yeah, I, I can't imagine why. Um, Jason wouldn't play there. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, with two. So from Jason's POV, both blanks are unseen to him. So I think he is definitely imagining this exact scenario of my opponent bingos, opens up the board, um, and then somehow manages to triple, triple or bingo with a blank. He's not going to let that happen. Um, oh my God. So Leverage still fits though. Leverate fits, making whoa, all those. Oh, whoa, whoa, awesome. Oh, good find. Oh my gosh. That's great. Through the eye of distrust, leverate for 80 odd points in that spot that would be so huge. Nice. It would give Jeremy the lead if he's able to find that play with all these overlaps. And it looks like he has a lot of the letters in the right yeah. order. He's I'm got EP. Sure he had... Yeah, I'm he's pretty sure he had EP. every set up. He's got ATE. If he just opens his mind to look through that eye of distrust and try to get a bunch of overlaps, he's going to hit that super heavy bingo. Of course, he is likely to bingo anyway here, but those extra right. points are huge, right? Like he can play um, overrate or something through the arm yeah. of distrust. I mean, there's definitely stuff that he'll play. But leverate mm -hmm. through that eye scores a lot more. It's definitely what he needs. And you can see Jason has Chi ready to play alongside the same eye of distrust. So it would be a huge swing here uh, if Jeremy oh, wow. was able to bingo and block that. And you can also see that Jason does not have the second blank. So Jeremy could easily draw that too. Wow. Oh, my Crazy. gosh. Oh, overrate is going down. Beautiful. Okay, that's good. Unfortunately, not as good as the play you spotted, Nitz. Uh, and it's that going to is... allow it's going to allow Chi to come down in response. Yeah. So big swing, big swing. But the score it's is still... literally tied right now. Yeah, I would say I if I was sitting there and if I was in the position I was, I would probably start looking through the R, the T, the S first. Because for the I, you know, it would require so many you know, different calculations to be able to figure out those parallels. I don't know. No question. Yeah, it's true. And looking through that I, I mean, with that blank, you've got an R, a T, an S, all those good letters of distrust. 
Um, it's going to be a little fatiguing. You also have the N and the D of mend, the G of oping. There's a ton of stuff. Oh, yes, of course. So uh, it makes it definitely stands to reason that if there's some kind of magical play through the obstructed eye, you might miss it sometimes. But you can see Jeremy has not drawn the second blank. In fact, quite the opposite. He has literally the opposite problem that he had at the start of the game. Yeah, there they all are. The vowels he was searching for all game have mobbed oh, him boy. now at the worst possible time. Boy. And it's like the same problem again, right? You get these one-point tiles that you know are bingo-friendly, but you can't actually score well with them when you're trying to make a four or five, uh, you know, five-tile play. I for think sure. he's got... Um, yeah, he's, he's thinking of arrow probably alongside mend, making N A and D E scoring decently well. Um, mm -hmm. I guess it's worth noting if um, let's see, can I get the? I guess we I have the tracking right now, so we can see from Jeremy's P O V what he's looking at. You can see it's a pretty even pool in terms of vowels and consonants. Um, so there's no great. I mean, sometimes. Uh, if it's a really consonant heavy pool, keeping a leave like A, E, I is actually a great thing because you're going to fill the rest of your tiles up with consonants. Not mm -hmm. necessarily the case here. There's enough vowels still to come that uh, I worry a little bit uh, about a leave like that going south. So, um, yeah, geez. especially, I mean, what just because Collins values A, E, I as positive doesn't mean that that's necessarily the correct move to make when the remaining tiles look like this. So the Scrabble player will usually evaluate what's left in the bag before they're making these decisions. Yeah, no question about it. At this late stage in the game, you're for sure going to be looking at that information. And as the game draws later and later, um, that information becomes more and more impactful to guide your mm -hmm. decision making. So, um, all right, it's back to Jason. It looks like he's getting ready to play Jap on top mm -hmm. of overrate. If I had to guess, that seems pretty good. Pretty. Where yeah. is that second blank? There it is. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Oof. All right. We're in for it now. So now it's wow. going to be getting real tight towards the end of this game. Oh. Jason, Jason's going to score 30 odd points, but he's only going to go up by 50. And Jeremy will have that choice to potentially bingo somewhere. Um, where is he setting that set of tiles up? I wonder. He's probably, tr oh, I know where he wants to play. On top of overrate, he wants to play something, uh -huh. uh, making a bunch of overlaps oh. and just barely fitting onto the board with that double word score next to gob. Um, uh, does he have so, so something like something like yeah, Jap is a great play here if Jason's able to play that, which I think he's gonna want to block that spot for sure. Um, he doesn't really have a play that's that blocky through the O of arrow, which is another serious threat that Jason needs to mm -hmm. consider. Um, a bingo mm -hmm. there would score in the seventies or maybe even 80, depending on what tiles are on the rack. So, um, what will Jason do here? Jape seems fine too. I wonder so, if keeping the E there might not be a good idea. Yeah. Hmm. There are a couple E's unseen to him. Of course, two of them. There are three E's. Three E's unseen to Jason. Two of them are on Jeremy's rack. Um, so, yeah, tough call whether to use it or not. I think it's okay to use it here um, just to get an extra point, maybe redraw one. And maybe it's nice also, given that on this turn, from Jason's point of view, there were eight tiles in the bag. So every subsequent tile you get closer to emptying the bag, um, maybe that's actually, I'm not sure if that's necessarily desirable for him. I might want to have held that tile back. So whatever, it's close. The, you know, Jape versus Jap, really splitting hairs. 
either way, the yeah. real situation is what should Jeremy do here? <laughs> hmm. Br brutal. Um, Yikes. I don't think he can bingo. Um, he only has 60 point bingos from the R of arrow and that's just not going to cut it he's only going to go up by 10 ish um i think jason should now yep there you go 364 so he's up by 54 and the bingos that Jer that jeremy can play right now score in the low 60s that mm -hmm. doesn't feel that doesn't feel like enough yeah so maybe I would he needs to sorry what some... were you saying will no, I was just, I, I think some non-bingo play is called for here, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. Happy to hear your, your thoughts on it, Nitz. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I just, I don't know. I mean, of course, if I were to see, like, if, if I see the bingo, you know, usually my brain is like, okay, play the bingo. But at this point, you have to calculate, you know, is the is the 60 odd point bingo even going to win me this? Because I am going to be drawing completely random tiles. I think there is four in the bag. And I don't, you know, maybe I would consider playing three tiles. Maybe see yeah. if I can fish. Let's let's try to look again from Jeremy's POV here after that play of Jape because it's going to be really interesting to look at the unseen tiles um, and see if we're able. So I'll wait till if we're able to cut to that or not. But I can tell you that the unseen tiles are all good bingo tiles. There it is. Look at that. All low point tiles. There's only one tile unseen to Jeremy. That's a higher value than one point. And it's a C, which is also a pretty good bingo tile in its own right. So Jer Jeremy definitely has, if he is able to play, you know, with 11 tiles unseen, that means there's four tiles in the bag. If he's able to play a three tile play here that opens some kind of space or does something positive for him, the odds of him redrawing good bingo tiles are pretty huge. Yeah. Oof. I don't, yeah, I, I don't know what I would do in this position because then I'd be calculating, okay, how much do I get for this bingo? And then uh, I empty out the bag. And then my opponent gets to, you know, approach the end game first. And then do I even have a place to go out that grabs me enough points from the play and whatever I get off of their rack? Because exactly. these are all, you know, one point tiles that's left except for the C, which means Jason's probably going to be completely fine getting off four or five tiles of his rack. Yeah, but that also the other nice thing is that the number of scoring tiles, the scoring tiles are so, they're all gone, that if I'm Jeremy, I'm not really worried about Jason making a play that puts the score out of reach for an eventual bingo. So I really, I also do sure. kind of like the idea that Phil has suggested in the chat of just something off of the S of Nitwits playing Sire, S-I-R-E. Wow. That looks yeah. pretty good. It creates a it creates a another threat that's going to be really annoying to deal with. Though I guess it's possible to deal with if Jason were to play something like down from the W of Nitwits or something like that. That uh, that blocks both the sire or siren, siri, and siri mm -hmm. as well as the O of arrow. So maybe that's maybe that's not practically going to work as often i don't know it's tough very very tough um you could uh, theoretically i think it's worth noting also that if you just want to play something at the top of the board with japer like what if you just play uh -huh. you know like R -E ire or yeah ire or rei yeah oh, what's this what's this oh. re Repairer, maybe? Repairer. Okay, it's Repairer. So Jeremy opts to play his bingo here. I just don't okay. know. I don't know. I mean, he's actually kind of caught Jason off guard here because Jason does not have an E to underlap these R's of Repairer. But at the same time, um, 
I don't know. Oh, he can play Solano mm -hmm. under. He can play S O L A N. Yeah, Solano through that oh, oh, boy. arrow is going to be too much to handle, I think, especially with no outs. Uh, maybe he has outs with C U. With, maybe Jeremy has outs with C U I E. I don't see them yet. But uh, Solano is going to be a killer play through that O. Um, so interesting choice to bingo here. I feel like only 59 points, that bingo. It puts Jeremy up by five. That doesn't feel like enough going into sort of a fresh end game here. But we'll see. We'll see what happens in this uh pretty, pretty exciting game again. Uh, yeah, a lot of the, very a lot of these cool. Is Josh Castellano the only player we've seen score over 300 points in a game on stream? Four, <laughs> 400, oh I should boy. say 400, 400 points. Because um, a lot of yeah, he's a monster like that. What are you gonna do? You know, he comes on stream and it's like you know, just obliterating everyone left and right. Good God. Yeah, no question. Um, oh wait, so. Adam says Chloe did. Chloe, I think she did 500 something yeah 530 yeah she, she yeah she um got 545 or 535 or something like that amazing against Stefan. so very She's very rude that, very yeah. rude rude daughter she is i mean just constantly <laughs> beating up on her father on stream rude um, daughter but, and oh, fantastic player you love to see is, it we gotta see enough. it though. Chloe is like the least rude person ever. So, so quiet, polite, unassuming, and a phenomenal player, obviously. So total, just joking, of course. But uh, yeah, um, this is, um, yeah, Jeremy probably was hoping to draw out plays with that bingo, right? Playing repairer and, pr and yeah. drawing some kind of four tiles, that allow him to play out on his next move might have given him a, a fighting chance here. Of course, and not sense. what he drew. Yeah. I mean, the, the bag looked eh, happy enough to, you know, something that you could go out and one with. It was, you know, and there, the board seems pretty open to four tile plays, you know, one, uh, one point tile plays. Yeah, especially but, yeah. if you were to have drawn, you know, you could draw something like what Jason is getting ready to play, right? What if what if yeah. Jeremy had drawn S O O N, which would play perfectly underneath Nitwits, right? Soon and taxis. Um, yeah. If he had drawn something like that, he's going to be sitting pretty right now. Um, mm -hmm. And you know that's uh, just just how the, the luck of the draw goes. Sometimes I do yeah, yeah. feel like. Um, I don't know. I would have tried to find something that's not a bingo there, but I don't really fault him for going this path. Um, it's so. yeah, it's definitely hard to get yourself out of the mindset of looking just for the bingo when you have the blank to be able to say, OK, maybe I shouldn't bingo here and I should find a, you know, a 20 point play that, you know, sets me up for a bingo next time. That's a it's a it's definitely a skill that you learn over time because it can be hard you know when you're when you're behind you just want to bingo and get ahead yeah it's tough passing up a bingo is one of those moves where when you start to do it confidently uh you know as to to use your word nits nits excuse me it makes you feel uh, like a little bit of a chad makes you feel like a big, big <laughs> You pass up that bingo when you're just like, yeah, I know. I got a bingo here. I don't care. It's not even the best play. I'm going to do something else. It's uh, it's a good feeling when you can do that. Of course, um, you sometimes, you, that. sometimes you go for that move and it's not correct, right? You, you, you look at it afterwards and you say to yourself, damn, I think I got too fancy here. I should have just taken the bingo. So Scrabble is, Scrabble is tough like that. Yeah, I've definitely had that moment. I was playing a game against um, Josh Castellano, and I had the option to, you know, play EXO, I think, for 30-odd points and keep SDT blank. Or, no, was it EXO? It was something. And I was just like, no, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bingo. And it wasn't the correct move, but, you know, I just bingoed. It's it's hard to imagine in some situations that bingoing wouldn't be correct, um, but this is a classic example of it. You know, close to the end of a game, when um, 
you you really need to try to set yourself up to hit that last play with a bingo, right? To out bingo yeah. and catch your opponent with a bunch of points on their rack, as opposed to um, bingoing early and getting into a protracted end game, which is what we're seeing now. So that's a classic scenario. Another classic scenario where um, passing up a bingo is a good idea is when you have a blank, but you also have like a 40 or a 50 point play that doesn't use up the mm -hmm. blank. That's yeah. another classic. Um, yeah. Oh, I just remembered my uh, my leave. It was uh, it was E X and then the O was on the board, so I could have made X O keeping T A T S. So uh, T A T S blank, and obviously you know Quacka liked that more, and I should have done that. But no, I just went for the bingo. It was just it's hard to get yourself out of the mindset of you know I see a bingo and I should just uh, play the well, bingo. Yeah, I mean, there's something inherently fun, too, about playing those longer words that show up less often, right? So if you have your <laughs> choice, if you have the chance of playing some crazy Q word that you're never going to see again in your life, or you can play oh QI, God. or you can play Chi for 40 points, leaving the blank, yeah, maybe one is strategically better, but you're never, you know, you're never going to be able to, when you're talking to your grandkids in the year 2080, when we've all <laughs> moved to Mars because this planet is no longer inhabitable, but we are playing oh Scrabble on Mars, uh, and you're telling those grandkids about it, you're not going to tell them about that time you played Chi for 40, but you might tell them about that crazy Q play you had. Uh, and about the time where you did 10 pull-ups for every time you lost a hasty. Yeah. Though on, <laughs> on Mars, the gravity might make it you know harder. My grandkids easy? don't need to, they don't need to hear about that. They don't need to hear about okay. the pages. Um, Whatever you say. But, uh, they can um, see the, they can see the VODs. That's true. Well, actually, I don't know what's, I might need to reenact that um, because the VODs are probably lost to, to history now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, maybe another time. That was fun actually. So, yeah. um, okay. so, so all right. Pretty, uh, yep. makes no outplay. Yeah. No outplay for Jeremy. Uh, even if he did have one, he would need to score quite a lot of points with it to try to take this game out of uh, the grasp of Jason here. He does get to within 10 though. So actually, wow. you yeah. know, any kind of like 20 point outplay might've done the trick for him here. But uh, instead, Jason is going to play all for a small score, get a couple extra points from Jeremy and notch a very, very close win. That score you see there, 405 to 385 is pretty much, uh, that's the final here. So pretty exciting game. Well done to Jeremy to make a game out of yeah. it after the ridiculous wow. consonant overload he dealt with to start the game. 